Hey everybody, welcome to Halid RV. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and behind us we have something normally a little bit closer to 1,600 pounds today, 1,740 pounds due to a couple options that we've added to it. This is the 1940 LTD Rockwood pop-up, and it is hands down the single most popular pop-up I've ever seen in my 13 year now career. Um, it's, it's just a simple, straightforward, it's a 10 foot box. It's got a dinette, it's got a kitchenette, and you've got like a front queen and a rear full bed. It's just a simple, one person wants to get out or small family starter, casual camper, or maybe you're just like, I, I just, you know, we camp all the time, but we don't need fireplaces and ceiling fans. We still want it to feel like camping. We don't want it to feel like glamping with heat pumps and uh, all that other stuff. That's where this one comes into play. So, <laughs> you know, not washer dryer prepped, but prepped and ready to get your family out there and have a good time. Now, uh, interesting note on this one. Last year, we started dabbling with uh, stocking some of these with a uh, roof air conditioner and power lift system, which is what you're going to see today because this has become our standard build based off some overwhelming feedback and response that we got from folks like yourselves last year. Uh, having all that stuff on right from the factory, it might cost a, a little bit more up front, but it costs way less than like adding an air conditioner after the fact. And not to mention, you're not going to regret having that air conditioner. You might regret not having it. And the power lift is there because that air conditioner is like an extra 80, 90 pounds. that can be a lot to manually crank up. So the power lift just makes it flick of a switch easy. And that's what camping's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be not, it's not supposed to be about sweating your face off, cranking stuff up and down. It's supposed to just be about getting out and having a good time and reconnecting with family, with nature, with, with whatever centers you, you know? Now, something that is very interesting to me is that in the world of like fifth wheels and travel trailers, people get very specific about where they want windows, how many windows they want. And usually the answer is I want all the windows I can get. Interestingly, in a pop-up camper uh, or a fold down or a tent camper or a folding camper, these things have more names than the whole Pepsi Coke uh, pop soda debate, by the way. Um, you can have 360 degrees of viewing and airflow. And what's kind of nice on this one, we have added that optional factory installed air conditioner. And keep in mind on this, the factory installed air, it's gonna add a couple pounds. It's gonna add some cost, certainly. It will cost less than an aftermarket dealer air conditioner upfit. And because Rockwood did the work, it is now factory warranted. So consider that a little bit, a little bit of peace of mind going in here. Um, we're carpetless, we're ventless flooring. This does have a direct venting furnace. And something I wanna point out here, cause I think it's an easily missed feature, is the fact that this has a simple one piece entry door. What I mean by that is uh, in a lot of pop-up campers, especially in a smaller, lighter, simpler series like this, there's a little travel door that's included with this. You actually saw the mini door uh, briefly outside when it was all closed up and we'll see it again in a little bit. There are a lot of campers that have like a two thirds door that marries up to that. And that's fine, but it means the handles all the way down here. And for an adult, that's not really exciting. A full one piece entry door, the handles at waist level where it's organic and makes sense. And do you remember the windows on the school bus guys where you'd pinch the little tabs and that would allow the window to slide up and down to get some airflow, except half the time they're always jammed and you needed the strong kid behind you to take care of it. Maybe that's my life. I don't know about you. I was I was young. I was small. I, anyway, <laughs> that's what these are. But what's neat is this top panel can slide down, but the bottom panel can also slide up. And one of the things that I think is very cool about that is, uh, let's say you've got like a little dog or something you want to keep an eye on in here. You don't want to let them out. You can do that. Quick little look at the storage inside that compartment. You might notice there's also household outlets on there. There are all sorts of smartly well hidden uh, outlets and things. All are, oh, I say well hidden. You gotta remember, it's this doesn't have solid walls. They can't put outlets up here. They have to put all the outlets down below. Like there's outlets over here on the side of the dinette. There's outlets uh, under that uh, table over there. Uh, real quick though, something I wanna mention. We have a 60 by 80 true queen up front. We have roughly a full size bed in the back. I wanna mention though that they're both heated beds, which is really nice. Rockwood uses a standard heated mattress and it's not like a separate heated blanket that always seems to get bunched up when you roll over it and never stays where you wanna put it. Now there is some storage below the dinette. Of course, that can fold down into a bonus sleeper. But another cool thing about this, if you notice, that is a free floating uh, folding leg table. So if you want to, 
Uh, you can move that around. You can take it outside. You can shift it one way or the other if you're like me and you're a little thick in the midsection right now. Now, you might notice, too, all of the windows that I mentioned, like the pop-up bed ends to our right over here, for instance, you can see how that has a zipper panel on it. What you may not realize is those clear see-through windows also have a zipper panel for airflow, and, of course, you have those curtains. So even if you're not using the air conditioner up here, you can always get, as long as there's breeze rolling outside, you can get some awesome breeze rolling through here. Um, something else that's new on these is they are now prepped for roof solar, not just a side solar prep plug for a portable panel, but that little sticker right there indicates that is where a charge controller could be located. Uh, and there's a roof solar prep plug actually in that upper rear corner back there on the campsite. And this thing has a lot of real estate. You could go panel nuts up there if you want. Um, frankly, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I there. I know there's a lot of people who are creating their own uh, campsites because there's a lot of campground congestion. But what would you? I mean, what do you? What do you kind of think about that right there? Now, a um, couple things. Uh, first of all, up top here, let's take a look at this cooktop because one of the cool things about this is that just like the table, it's perfectly portable. So if you want to take that outside, and there's actually a mount point for it outside that we're going to see in a minute. You can do that and just leave this wide open. And I think actually this is how most people use this camper from what I've gathered uh, over the years listening to customer feedback. Um, the uh, the idea here is now we've just got, in a sense, a bench that we could sit on or it's just awesome prep space. And take a look down below, some really good storage below all that. That's easily the biggest single chunk of storage you have in this camper. Not to be outdone though, over here, because remember, the cooktop is designed to stay on the door side of this camper, that chunk of kitchen counter space will always be there. Now, an interesting note, uh, this RV doesn't have our onboard holding tanks. And you're like, how can that be? It's got a sink, you know? Uh, well, the RV, basically that sink pumps straight effectively outside of the camper. So you need to have it drained into a bucket that you properly dispose of. Uh, and for most campgrounds, that means you don't just dump it on the ground. Um, or you get like one of those little mini honey wagon tote tanks, nothing major, although the bigger it is, the less you got to worry about it. And again, take a look at storage. And as we look down here, that is a three-way refrigerator. It's 12 volt, uh, shore power and propane. But something I want to make you aware of when I say that, when you hear 12 volt, you're thinking active compressor fridge? No, this is a still a passive absorption fridge. So what that means, if you are looking at 12 volt, uh, shore power or propane, that will translate into cold, colder, and coldest on one of these. Now, something we like to do for you, Halet RV, part of the thing about being family owned and operated is helping you set good expectations and understandings. Like in a lot of uh, pop-up campers, you see that they have these combination like hanging bunk light fan combos. I like to call them glow and blows. Uh, that is a name given to us by one of our viewers. And uh, I, I think that's just, uh, that's a viewer submitted nerdism right there. It's number 37. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you see that this has the plug up here and you're like, well, it comes with a couple glow and blows, doesn't it? And the answer is no. Here in the basic uh, LTD Freedom series, the most basic series, they're not factory included. We can get them for you. That's not a big thing. And if the only thing you need to go camping is a couple glow and blows, let our team know. That's just easy, easy stuff to handle. It doesn't even require a screwdriver. It just, there you go, you're done. But, um, just so you know what you're getting. Because the bigger pop-ups, like the high walls that we carry, they do have them. Part of the pricing difference on here, though, is that these by, from the factory do not. And I just want to make sure that you know what you're getting into before you go, you know, giving us your social security number and grandmother's maiden name and all that kind of stuff. Let's make sure we got the right camper first. Now, something I like to do all the time is uh, show RVs in what I call road mode. Most of the time, like that big Catalina in the background, that means closing up the slide outs. Well, on this one, I think it actually kind of means closing this thing down and it makes it easier to see a couple things that would otherwise be a little more difficult to see. First of all, right up front here, if you're gonna hand park this thing in like a garage, the fact that Rockwood still gives us that little wheel on the front, that is exceptionally handy and beneficial right there because this thing is small enough, you can just hand push it in place. And then up top here, you see how it has a lighter colored roof that is so that if you are uh, out there in just direct hot, bright sunlight, because even with that optional air conditioner that we're looking at right there, it's gonna, it'll get warm. You know, these things don't hold cold air the way that a fully enclosed travel trailer would because there's effectively a fancy piece of cloth between you and the great outdoors. 
So that's gonna organically shed a lot of heat, prevent it from cooking you from the top down. You can also see how these are now roof solar prep standard, which is a new for 22 feature, I think is pretty cool. That's something that previously you got only on their ESP series, the Extreme Sports Package. So one of the things you might wonder, how big is this thing closed up? Grabbing the handy dandy tape measure, it's about 55 inches to the top of that roof, which if you notice, you see how it's actually front to back my humps right there? It's uh, It's got a front to back camber to it effectively. Um, then you're gonna add about nine and a half inches if you add the optional air conditioner like we've done here. So as long as you've got about five and a half foot of clearance, if I'm doing that math correctly in my head, I'm not a math major or anything, but that sounds about right. If you got you know, five and a half foot or better, more would always be better, say so you got a good six foot clearance, you should be free and clear on one of these. And although it's not a major departure from what they were doing last year, I really like the shift from the green to the orange accents. I don't know. It just, it works for me. I, I, I can see that being very subjective, but it kind of, it reminds me of like the, the look that you get on the Geo Pros or the white exterior package on the other Rockwoods. It just, it just feels right to me. Now, I want to clarify something here, but uh, these are not extra outside cookers and, and tables that come with this camper. This is the table and the cooktop from inside the camper. I wanted to bring them out here to really drive home the fact that everything in this camper can really serve two purposes. And that's, I think, something that you really have to do on a smaller RV. The, uh, the smaller it is, I think the more crafty and creative you have to be. Now, if you look up top there, you got a very conventional uh, pop-up style bag awning. And something that, you know, I, 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 I talk about, I don't know that I've ever really shown it very often, is when you pull that table out of there, it just creates a nice open lounge instead of the uh, uh, a dinette, as it were, right there. But if you're noticing, that's the perfect little place for a steering contest. man. And you know, that's the kind of thing that my parents would have us, me and my brother do, I think probably to keep us occupied and out of their hair a little bit. And the uh, older I get here, and I think back to my younger camping days, the more I realize that my parents had some very creative ways of getting rid of us. I think if uh, my parents needed some, some, some time together in the RV, they would throw 92 cents and change in the grass and tell me and my brother we weren't allowed back in until we found a whole dollar. <laughs> now, I can't take credit for that joke. Uh, all credit for that is due to Mr. Joshua Sheehan uh, from another YouTube channel called Gander Flight. If you're not familiar, um, he puts out some, some very excellent uh, how-to videos and DIY videos. And actually, he has uh, a lot of experience in a pop-up camper himself and has some very awesome videos, some ideas, some things that maybe you should think about before buying a pop-up or some things that you should get for it. So if you haven't done so, uh, I'll leave you a link in the video description, actually. Go check out uh, the Gander Flight uh, YouTube channel, and there's there's some very, very good things over there for you to check out. Um, the uh, air conditioner we already kind of talked about up top. Again, the power lift system that we've applied to this one going to make that simple and easy. Now, we call this tent ends. We call this canvas. It's technically not either of those things. It's a material called Duratec. It has like a five-year warranty. The Duratec material itself is waterproof. Remember, you got all kinds of seams on this thing. And pop-ups actually need to get seasoned. And if you're not familiar with what that means... Seasoning a pop-up is when basically you just kind of spray it down with water. That water gets into uh, like the, 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 the threading effectively that holds all the bed and Duratec material together and it'll cause it to swell a little bit and it has to do that, I believe it's actually five times before the RV is considered fully seasoned. Um, and that is when basically everything has a real nice tight pull to it because when the thread swells a little bit, it pulls a little more and it kind of tightens everything up. Funny little process. It's this is the way that pop-ups have been for years, uh, and technically hybrids. 
we don't talk about it very much. I think it's because most of the time when a pop-up's sitting out here for display, it's gone through enough weather patterns. By the time you take it home, that's not an issue. I wanted to specifically mention it this year because things have been going so aggressively fast. We've literally sold some things like Rockwood GeoPros when they were still hooked up to the original factory delivery truck. So it's possible the RV hasn't had a chance to get fully seasoned by the time you take it home. And I just want you to be aware of that. It's a good idea. The first, like, first of all, it's your first pop-up. You should get familiar in your backyard of how to set it up and take it down. You don't want to do that your first time at a campsite because you're going to just be too much going on. You're a little bit rattled, you know. So get used to setting it up, leveling it up in the in the backyard, and then just hose it down a couple times while the kids are playing in it. You know, you can hose them down, although you don't want wet kids in the camp. You get the idea. You get what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now. Somebody stop me. A couple other little things here for you. Sometimes it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be effective. Like the little, I don't know, I call it plug buddy next to the power winch over here. Just a place to keep your safety chain hooks and your seven-way plug so it's not eating dirt and getting followed out, you know? And remember, this RV has roof solar prep. We saw that when it was closed. You still maintain, though, a side solar prep plug. And if you look down here, you might notice how it also includes a handy little wheel for that tongue jack. This thing, because again, when it folds up, it's like only five and a half foot tall, I think with the air conditioner or something like that. It's very short. Um, it's only seven foot wide. This is something you could very easily like hand park in a garage. So that little wheel is something that lets you, uh, well, <laughs> wheel around uh, <laughs> rather easily. I should really start scripting stuff so I sound like um, at least a little bit less of an idiot. <laughs> So let us know what you think about this one. Uh, do you like the idea of the factory standard air and the power lift? Again, we saw good results on that last year, but maybe that was just a fluke. Always open to feedback from folks like yourselves because you truly drive our channel, you drive our inventory. Your input really shapes so much of what we do here. Uh, short of that, if you haven't done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button, uh, like our video, and when you're ready, remember we're family owned and operated. We'd love to work with you and we don't do hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun and happy camping everyone. Remember, I leave you a link in the video description where you can always check pricing and availability, whether you're curious or whether you're serious.